Let D be the solid region and the first octant bounded below by the surface, Z is equal to Y plus X squared, and above by the plane, Z equals 4. Now we want to use a triple integral to find the volume of this solid. So we need the bounds on this region. So let's begin by thinking about what are the Z bounds. Now looking at this question, we can see that the solid is bounded below by the surface. Z is equal to Y plus X squared. So that's going to be the lower bound on Z. So our lower bound is the surface. Z is equal to Y plus X squared. And we can also see from this example that it is bounded above by the plane. So that will be the upper bound. So from here, we can conclude that therefore, z is going to be greater than or equal to y plus x squared and less than or equal to 4. Beautiful. Now we should also make a little love note here to ourselves that because this solid region is restricted to the first octant, this is also implying to us that z is greater than or equal to zero, that y is greater than or equal to zero, and that x is greater than or equal to zero. So with this in mind, let's now proceed and think about the x and y bounds. So to determine the x and y bounds of this solid region, we need to consider the solid's projection onto the xy plane. So in order to do this, we need to equate our surfaces. So in other words, we need to set z equals z to see what the projection is on the xy plane. So we have our first z, y plus x squared, and we're setting this equal to 4, our second z. So simplifying this to an equation we recognize, we have y is equal to a minus x squared plus 4 and now again, because this is restricted to the first octant, in R2, this is restricted to the first quadrant. So this is going to be such that x is greater than or equal to 0, and that y is greater than or equal to 0. So let's think about this graphically. All right, so let's give ourselves a little bit more room here. So thinking about this parabolic curve in R2, we have the parabola that is reflected across the x-axis and shifted up four units. So something like this. Beautiful. So this is our y is equal to minus x squared plus 4. We know that this vertex is at the ordered pair, 0, 4. And now because this region is restricted to quadrant 1, we also know that we have a lower bound here of at the x-axis, or y is equal to 0, and then another bound on the y-axis, so that's where x is equal to 0. And making note of these important intersection points here, we already have the vertex at 0, 4. Now we know we have a bound at the origin, and then also thinking here, this x-intercept at the ordered pair 2, 0. And so the region bounded by these three curves is the projection on the xy plane. So now taking our pencil and running it across this region, we can see no matter where we place our pencil that the parabola is always the top curve and the x-axis is always the bottom curve. So we can use the order of integration, dy dx, and say that y is always greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to minus x squared plus 4, and that x is always greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2. Beautiful! So we have everything that we need now to set up the volume integral. Alrighty, so we know that the volume of this solid region D in space is defined by a triple integral over this solid region D with an integrand of 1 and our volume differential. So looking at our bounds here, the outermost integral is with respect to x. So this is the integral from 0 to 2. Our middle integral is 
the y integral. So this has bounds 0 to minus x squared plus 4. And last but not least, the innermost integral is the integral with respect to z. And so we know this is the integral from y plus x squared to 4. Our integrand still remains 1, and the order of integration we're using is dz, dy, dx. So looking at this, we can identify our innermost integral is with respect to z. And so that's where we're going to begin. So let's make sure that we're giving ourselves plenty of room. And now we're ready to evaluate the inner integral. So we have the integral from y plus x squared to 4 dz. Cute general antiderivative, this integrates to z. And we're ready to evaluate from y plus x squared to 4. So we have y, or excuse me, we have 4 minus y plus x squared. And distributing that negative through to both terms, we are left with, I'm actually going to rewrite this as 4 minus x squared minus y. Beautiful! So we can now take this and plug it back into the triple integral above, and we're ready to evaluate the middle integral. So here we go. We know that our middle integral is with respect to y. So it's the integral from 0 to 4 minus x squared, or minus x squared plus 4, of 4 minus x squared minus y dy. Now, because we're integrating with respect to y, x is a constant. So when we integrate, we can group this 4 minus x squared together. So that's a constant multiplied by y minus y squared divided by 2. And we're now ready to evaluate from 0 to 4 minus x squared. So plugging the upper bound in, we have 4 minus x squared multiplied by 4 minus x squared minus 4 minus x squared squared all over 2. And then when we substitute 0 in, everything cancels. So we have minus 0. Now, we can rewrite this first part to make the evaluation a little bit easier on us. So we can rewrite this as 4 minus x squared squared minus 4 minus x squared squared divided by 2. And look at this. This simplifies to just 1 half times 4 minus x squared squared. Beautiful. So we can take this and plug it back in to that triple integral above to evaluate the outer integral. So we know that the outer integral is with respect to x, so that's the integral from 0 to 2, of 1 half multiplied by 4 minus x squared squared dx. Now, because we know we need to integrate with respect to x, we're going to need to FOIL this binomial product out. So this is going to leave us with the integral from 0 to 2 of 1 half multiplied by 16 minus 8x squared plus x to the fourth dx. And look at this, we have another cute general antiderivative. So integrating by the power rule, we are left with, we have 1 half multiplied by 16x minus 8 times x cubed, that's all over 3, plus x to the fifth, all over 5. And we're ready now to evaluate from 0 to 2. So this leaves us with 1 half. Now plugging 2 in, we have 16 multiplied by 2 minus 8 thirds times 2 cubed, which leaves us with 8 minus 2 to the fifth, which is 32 fifths. Now, when we plug 0 in, we're left with just 0. So, rewriting this, we have 1 half 
multiplied by 16 times 2 is 32, minus 8 times 8 is 64 over 3, minus 32 fifths. So we need a common denominator within these parentheses. So we can see that that would be 15. So we have 1 half multiplied by 32 times 15 minus 64 times 5 minus 32 times 3. And this is all divided by 15. And just a little bit of algebra left here. So we have 1 half multiplied by 32 times 15 gives us 480. Minus 64 times 5 is 320. Minus 32 times 3 is 96. And that's still all over 15. So let's see. We've got 480 minus 320, which leaves us with 160. So we have 160 minus 96, which leaves us with 256 divided by 15. And we have one final simplification here. We see that 2 goes into 256 128 times, which leaves us with a beautiful final answer. We can say that the volume of this solid region D is equal to 128 fifteenths. And because this is a volume, this will be cubic units. And so there you have it. This is our beautiful final answer for the volume of this solid region.